Now your camera is already good enough to start shooting professional looking wildlife videos. And with a few simple modifications, you could turn your camera into something like this. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a camera like this and why you might need something like this to begin with. My name is James Freistack and I'm an Emmy Award winning wildlife cinematographer living in beautiful British Columbia. If you're a wildlife photographer or filmmaker and you want to learn more about making wildlife videos, consider subscribing to see more videos like this. First things first when building out your camera rig is uh, getting yourself a good camera cage. Now this cage has a few purposes. One being that it will help protect your camera. Um, we take our cameras into some pretty rugged locations so it's nice to have some, some protection. But um, also on this cage particularly, it's got a lot of uh, quarter 20 and 3 8 holes around the uh, frame. And um, this just bolts right onto the camera itself. And uh, this is just so I can attach a lot of the uh, peripheral components that we're going to be adding onto this camera. So I'll have my camera cage secure like that. And one thing I like to do is actually get my lens on first. So everything lines up well. So I'll grab this Canon 100 to 500, snap that on. Uh, the next components that I'm going to be putting on are this uh, riser plate. And this also has the uh, rail support system that we'll be putting on. And these uh, rails, these 15 mil bars, um, you can get them on Amazon. I'll have uh, links for pretty much all this stuff um, in the description below. But uh, yeah, these rods will hold my follow focus and will also hold my lens supports. And um, yeah, just gives um, more rigidity to the entire system and uh, gives it just more, more, a lot more stability that we need to get these uh, rock solid shots. So. Then we'll get our 15 mil rods. Not that it matters, but I like to usually stick with one brand of components so that they'll fit together and work together. And I typically use a small rig, but I do have some tilted stuff and some Manfrotto stuff, but majority of my stuff that I have is uh, small rig components. The way things are gonna line up with this camera rig is that I've got some seamless lens gears on here for my follow focus. So uh, I'm gonna have to put that on first. Let's just get it on there because I'm gonna need to make room for the lens support. And so these just slip onto the 15 mil bars and there's a nice spot just back here for it to line up so it's not hitting the focus. Nice. Okay, so now we have the lens support. We've got our focus wheel right here, our follow focus, and we'll talk more about why follow focus is so important later. But uh, that's all attached and good to go. And uh, next, we are going to put on our base plate. So now I like to get this oversized Manfrotto um, style uh, base plate for my tripod. Um, we'll talk about that later, um, it's pretty important to have some extra length for, for your, uh, these lens, lens uh, that barrel. So when I balance my tripod appropriately, um, if I'm at the, the wide end for a while, um, the center of gravity is going to shift so that this base plate will be able to shift in the tripod I can, on the fluid head and I can move it forward or backwards depending if I'm wide or if I'm going tight. So that's kind of why I have, well, it's the reasons why I have um, a long base plate like this. All right, nice and tight. And uh, yeah, I have this uh, variable ND filter, and this is so we can control our shutter speed, which is absolutely critical when filming wildlife. So. Um, with these systems, they don't have anything built in or anything like that. So the only way to quickly adjust your exposure um, is to have these variable NDs. I really like this one. And again, I'll have the links to all this stuff in the description. Let's screw that on. And here's my Tilta Mini Map Box. Love this little guy. So often, very useful to have. And uh, the next uh, item up for this uh, rig build 
is our monitor. So again, I like this small rig. Noga arms, put that right on top here. Now I really like this monitor. There's some pros and cons to it. Uh, the main pro being that um, it's a nice bright monitor. It is awesome. And really bright sunny days, it's just absolutely great to have such a really bright monitor. Um, another pro is that this monitor has pre-record built into it. So now the Canon R5 doesn't have any pre-record or cache record. Um, do you guys know what cache recording is? Anyway, I'll explain it right now. Well, cache recording on this Atomos Ninja recorder, what it does is has a buffer in it. And so this buffer will constantly be recording and deleting this cache of video that's uh, constantly being cycled through the memory card. And um, it's really useful to have when you're trying to wait for a moment, but you don't want to burn, you know, you know, hundreds of gigabytes of footage waiting for, you know, a owl to turn its head or, or a bird to fly off. So what this has is like a two second buffer in it. So when that bird does take off, you can hit record. And then when that bird, when that bird takes off, you can hit record within two seconds and you'll still capture that footage. It's actually a really useful, um, reason to have this recorder and I use it like all the time it's really really important to have and that's why like some of these cameras are so expensive because they'll have this stuff built right into it and, like the red cameras they'll have like up to 20 30 seconds of pre-record so that's incredibly useful when you're waiting for very rare moments or moments that are you're trying to anticipate um, like a bird uh, fledging or um, just anything that just requires a lot of time and patience so that you're not just uh, burning tons and tons of footage. So um, I recommend having something like this or looking to see if your camera already has an internal uh, cache record. I know some of the Sony cameras have it and I think the higher end uh, Canon, like the Canon C70 I believe has it and the R5C has it. Um, so yeah, um, if your camera has it, let me know. I'm really interested in learning more about other smaller systems that have these pro features. So now it's absolutely brutal about the Canon R5 in particular and using this external recorder is that it's got the micro HDMI and I planned on making this video a few days ago but I actually snapped the cable and um, it happens all the time with these micros. Um, I got this one from off Amazon. It's an Elvin's cable. It's really really nice actually but I can tell already it just it's just in a really bad spot and they break all the time. And uh, the next one, I like to have a lens shade for the for the monitor. Um, of really bright sunny days, it's really nice to have um, some lens shade or sorry, monitor shade, so that you can see what you're doing. Uh, this is a very very bright, nice monitor, but um, it's still nice to have uh, to take some of that glare off, so you can see what you're doing. Awesome. Uh, our Sony NPF batteries. I like these uh, Sony NPFs. These are the 960s. Uh, they're quite big and I could go through uh, two Canon batteries before I drain one of these. So um, any given shoot, I'll you know have a handful of um, the Canon batteries and I'll have just maybe two or three of these uh, NPFs and that's usually pretty good for the day. Another great reason to have these recorders is that you can get these remote triggers. I like these ones by the Liebeck and the Liebeck REC-LA is the one that you need specifically for the Atomos Ninja recorder. And um, this is abs an absolute must if you want to get those like perfect wildlife shots. Now, what I like to do um, when I'm filming anything that, um, you know, if you want to make things look professional and you're out there and you're, you know, trying to just get the perfect action you want your what we call we call the rushes and you want the producers and the production team to you know you make your rushes look really really professional um i'm always living on pre-record and what i'll do is when i find my subject i find the perfect frame and i start following it i got my focus i got my pre-record and then as i'm tracking or i'm just getting my that right moment is waiting for then i can hit record and everything when you start you hit play on your footage it already looks really really good like it's like they can put it in the timeline and it already looks great. Um, it's brutal when you're starting, you know, the camera's just shaking, hunting all over the place, trying to find focus and the producers have got to go through, you know, terabytes of footage and all like the first 10, 
seconds is you just trying to flail around, trying to get focus. Um, I don't know. I like to have um, you know my shots looking great from right when you hit record. So yeah, we got our trigger record here. Awesome. And um, that is about it for the actual camera rig itself. There it all is. It's pretty easy to do. It doesn't take very long to do. And it's not really that expensive. Like some of these parts are, you know, if you're gonna spend this much money on your camera and your lens and stuff, all these other little parts are, you know, a few hundred dollars and um, you can all of a sudden just upgrade the camera that you already have and create amazing looking footage. So um, I highly recommend looking at your camera and your camera manufacturer and start building out these components. Like this is the Canon R5, but I know for pretty much all the cameras that are out there on the market today, they're gonna have these camera cages and then you get the cage and you can build out really all this with any camera. I think I have a Sony A6000. I could, you know, that camera is really old and a little APS-C sensor and um, I can put any lens I want on there and uh, just build it out just like this and uh, I can use that camera, it doesn't matter. I know that people even rig out their iPhones. So there's, uh, these components are pretty much good for really um, um, any camera that's out there. And then uh, last but not least, we're gonna talk about something that's gonna definitely up your game in shooting really professional looking wildlife videos, so. So now that we have our camera rig all built out, um, it's looking pretty good, pretty excited about it. I really like this little setup actually, um, but it's not gonna do us any good unless we have a really solid tripod. Now that's absolutely critical. Um, so I have this tripod right here, I wouldn't say it's the most solid tripod, but it does the trick for when I'm uh, trying to be really lightweight, uh, run and gun, and I need to get places um, in a hurry, or um, I have to hike long distances. I've used this um, all over the world. I, I take it with me everywhere. It's really lightweight, and it's definitely got me um, out of a few situations for sure. So um, again, we've got this really long base plate here. We can snap that into place. This is the Manfrotto NitroTech fluid head and it's on the iFootage carbon fiber um, tripod and uh, like I said earlier is that when say we've got our camera nice and balanced which is actually quite nicely balanced now that's great actually but if I'm to extend and go to the long end it's not going to be as balanced it's not going to be as balanced right now so what I can do in that situation is that I can shift the center of balance to make sure that um, everything is solid. So right now I'm a little bit back heavy. I can shift that a little bit more forward, lock it in, and it's perfect now. Yeah, it's nice and fluid. Oh, that's great. And then, um, again, this is really great to have a tripod like this because it's got a ball head. Now it's a pretty small ball head for, for a camera. It's kind of pushing the limits for something like this. Um, it's got a 75 mil bowl. I recommend uh, getting something that has maybe a little bit bigger of a base, but maybe 100 mil is uh, more adequate. On um, the big red cameras that we use, we'll go with the 150 mil bowl and have these big massive tripods and are really, really heavy. Um, um, for this setup, this is kind of like the sweet spot actually. And so, yeah, it's got this ball head. And so you can just, when you get to your location and you're on uneven terrain, you can just level the head like that. And then, there you go, you're set, ready to shoot.